Are you struggling with digestive issues, bloating, constipation, or diarrhea, not feeling energized even when you feel like you're eating whole foods? This episode is for you. Tune in to learn how gut dysfunction shows up in perimenopause, the important question you need to ask if you are eating clean whole foods and still struggling with how you feel, and the impact of diet culture and calorie restriction on your gut in perimenopause and where to start to heal. What's up, sisters? Welcome to the Period Whisperer podcast. I'm Bria. I'm your host. If you're new, I'm so happy you are here. I'm your perimenopause and menopause sister, your holistic trainer, hormone specialist, translator of your female body. I'm a recovering people pleaser and hustle addict turned body whisperer and hormone decoder. And I am here to help you de-stress your body, decode what it is saying, become the CEO of it, and own your own health, energy, and weight loss again. This show is for you, the overwhelmed, overworked, underappreciated step woman who dreams of a body they feel strong, energetic, and sane in. The woman who knows that she shouldn't just wave the white aging flag and believes in a body and life of peace, love, and purpose. But you don't just know how to get there yet. So if you are stuck in your body, your energy, your life, you are in the right spot. Let's lean in and learn what our bodies are saying to us. Hey there, sister. How are you feeling in your body today? Are you struggling at all with any gut stuff, any digestive issues, indigestion, bloating, all of those things? When I first entered the magical window of perimenopause, it was my gut and bloating and digestive upset, along with a lot of other things that really made this transition super uncomfortable. So I'm really excited about this episode today and this interview with the amazing Taylor Niece, who's here to help us better understand gut dysfunction and diet culture in perimenopause and how this all ties together and what to do about it. Taylor is a board certified nurse practitioner who decided after her own health struggles to help other women rewrite their health story with the power of functional medicine. Taylor specializes specifically in gut healing, which is why I'm so excited to have her on. She performs in-depth gut testing and creates targeted healing protocols, and she truly believes that a healthy gut is the single most important health asset any woman can have. Her goal is to teach women how to heal themselves so they can share the wisdom and strength with others. Sounds pretty amazing, right? Well, I'm beyond pumped because we cover a lot of great things, including first steps to start taking charge of this yourself. Let's get into the episode. You're going to love it. Well, hey there, sisters. Welcome back to the Period Whisperer podcast, where we are talking about all things on how to make your perimenopause a better time for you (laughs) and one that you really thrive in. And we have, as I mentioned in the bio, we have an amazing guest here today. I'm so excited to welcome Taylor Neese to help us with this conversation. So welcome, Taylor. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. I know. I love just having conversations with other women in this industry and just kind of hearing, you know, you know, hearing your perspective, hearing what's working for you and how to help other people, especially with your expertise. So um, welcome. And why don't we just start with a little bit about you so we can, you know, it's always great to hear someone's bio, but it's so nice to hear what in their heart brought them here today. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to tell you a little bit more about me and what I do, but um, I think it's sometimes important to um, understand someone by sharing a story. So I think Mm -hmm. I'll start by just sharing my story about um, how I got into functional medicine. And really that is, I started off in conventional medicine. I mm-hmm. knew I always wanted to heal people that was in my nature. And unfortunately, the only way that I really knew how to do that was conventional medicine. Mm-hmm. And so for the last five years, I was practicing in conventional medicine as an, as a nurse practitioner. And it wasn't Amazing. until, yeah, thank you. Thank you and it wasn't until, um, after having my daughter and I had some pretty serious health issues And even as a provider, I couldn't help myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was kind of the moment where I just said, okay, something's, something's wrong. There's a better way. And it really all came to a head. I remember this moment. I call it like my shower moment. 
and I was sitting on the floor of my shower and I was just like crying. I think every woman has had a moment like totally this. Totally been there. Where, <laughs> where all of it or is many. just hitting the fan. Yeah. yeah. And I was dealing with, um, you know, anxiety and depression. I had um, terrible acne and psoriasis. These are all new onset conditions I had never had before. And I was seeing multiple specialists. I had done tons of labs. I hadn't gotten any answers. I was just on a growing list of medications. And sitting there in that moment, I was actually crying because my scalp hurt so bad that I couldn't even wash it. And that was just a terrible breaking point for me. Yeah. And like I said, as a provider, I didn't even know what to do to help myself. Mm-hmm the creams, the shampoos, nothing was working. And in that moment, I really needed someone to reach out their hand. And I love how you start your podcast, like, Hey sisters, Mm -hmm. I really needed someone to say, Hey sis, I got you. I know what's Mm -hmm. going on. I know how to fix you. And I wish I could say like in that moment that I figured everything out and I got better and I found the right people. I didn't, it took five or six years before I finally found out slowly the things that I needed to do to heal myself. And it was a journey, but Mm -hmm. through that journey, um, I'm very thankful because without that journey, I wouldn't be able to help people the Mm -hmm. way I do get to now. And for me in that journey, I was doing all the right things and just not making any progress. And that missing kind of piece for me was gut health. And so that's why I chose to specialize in gut health with functional medicine is because gut health is really the center of everything. Mm. It really is. And so working with the people in this way has been amazing because yeah. we can touch so many different systems in the body. Like, yes. like I said, that was just the missing, the missing component for me. Yes. From functional practitioner to functional practitioner, I feel you on yeah. all of that, right? It's, yeah. you know, we all, we very quickly, we want a quick answer, but that functional piece, as we start to understand it, it's amazing how it just supports the whole wellness process. So, and I agree. It's, it's really powerful of you to share that part. It's like when you are, when you feel like you are struggling in your area of expertise in a way, it's, it's yeah. a real, um, it's a real dark, but eye-opening moment of like, okay, something has to change because if right. I'm in this industry and I can't help myself feel better, how on earth is someone who's not in this industry ever going to, yes. yeah, it's a real yes. like, woof. So I'm so grateful for how you help women and how you show up that way because, you know, ideally we, even though we're all different, we want to shorten that five or six year journey, don't we, for other people? Yeah. yeah. I think that was the big component that was missing yeah. From my journey is having a practitioner or a coach to walk me through mm. what I needed to do. Yeah, it makes a big difference. It makes it a does. big difference. And even just admitting that you need help, I think it makes that big difference, doesn't it? Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So let's start here because that's uh, so powerful to hear that. I mean, obviously everyone listening, you know, the sisters listening to us today are going to be, you know, in this pocket of perimenopause. So 35 to 55 and even older postmenopause. So yeah. how let's if if we're going to dive into gut stuff today how it, how does struggles in the gut or challenges in our gut or dysbiosis in the gut whatever we want to call it how does that impact our hormones especially knowing we're so sensitive during this phase of life Yeah um well I think probably the first thing to talk about would be if we have problems with dysbiosis or an imbalance in our microbiome, which is for anyone listening who doesn't understand the little bacteria who live in our gut and do good things and bad things. When we have an imbalance of that good and bad, then we can end up with issues with absorbing our nutrients or producing the necessary hormones so that this way we can actually achieve Mm. well-being. And so when you have this imbalance, it can really lead to a lot of problems in that perimenopausal phase, but really just in life in general throughout your life, not just perimenopause, but throughout a woman's life. If you have that imbalance, you're going to experience a lot of uncomfortable symptoms and it's certainly not going to improve anything. Yeah. Um, And I know that with speaking on just as an example, if we have trouble with stomach acid, right? Mm -hmm. If we're not secreting stomach acid, we're not absorbing nutrients Mm -hmm. and then we don't have the building blocks we need for hormones yeah, or hormone production. Yeah. That's it. So it's like, it doesn't even matter, you know, what we take or what we don't take. If we can't break it down, if we can't absorb it, if we don't have, as you say, I love that the building blocks to even make it, then we end up, um, 
you know, kind of crumbling in many different areas, not just not just one, not just creating the imbalance, but even just the creation of what we want. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, and, that's a- yeah. And I mean, it's it's kind of fascinating just how interconnected everything is. But, you know, you don't have the stomach acid that then provides the nutrients for the building blocks for the hormones. But on the flip side of that, then we don't we're not able to synthesize the vitamins that are being produced in the gut either. Like we need all of that nutrition, not just for the building blocks for hormones, but also to support the gut bacteria who are working on the hormones. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. There's like, and, and again, I think this is what ends up speaking to our challenges where we sometimes want to go out real quick and just like buy some supplements or some pre or probiotics or take some hormones. And it's like, Sometimes those things can work, but ultimately there's the functional pieces that there's a breakdown below that. And if we don't fix that piece, we're going to end up right back where we were because it's more to it than just, you know, adding some more of this and a dash of that. (laughs) Right. And I love what you said too. It's really about not what are, what are we eating? How, Mm -hmm. how good is our nutrition? It's really like, are we digesting and and absorbing eating, you know? Yeah. And as I love, that's, it's so, it's so important to almost like highlight that because it is a reality for some women where they feel like they are, and they are, you know, eating a real whole food, like low inflammatory situation. Yes. And it's not moving the needle because of these other issues. Right. And so I think the gold star question here mm-hmm. is always ask why, yeah. right? Like, okay, we're doing everything right. That's great. Why do we still feel bad? Mm-hmm. We haven't found the why yet. So if you're like in a position for anyone listening and you feel like you're doing all the right things, ask why and Mm -hmm. try and, you know, unfold that puzzle and start putting back together. Yeah, that's great. So maybe we should dig into that a little bit further because, you know, if, if we do, you know, cause I think we all understand like the first step to optimal health is always going to be, let's make sure we're having really good quality sleep or at least holding space for that and having good habits. Let's make sure we aren't eating inflammatory processed foods, you know, and that we are eating regularly. Let's make sure we're moving. Let's make sure we're, you know, handling our stress. But if you are doing most of those things, what you know, when we're asking why, what could that look like for some women in your experience? Yeah. I think sometimes it it honestly boils down to mindset. What Mm -hmm. is your interpretation of stress? And do you Mm -hmm. feel your stress? Mm -hmm. What is your interpretation of healthy? And Mm -hmm. are those actually the foods we should be eating? Or on a topic of restriction, are we restricting our diet in such a way that you feel is healthy, but is actually impeding your progress to feeling better? Oh, that's so So I think it goes down to mindset a lot of the time. Yes. And I'm so glad we're getting to this because I think when we talk about like, yes, our mindset around what is healthy food, our mindset around what is enough food, um, we can't help but like knock on that door of diet culture. Yeah. It's like, what is the world telling us um, about what is healthy and what isn't healthy that may not be accurate for us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that. Cause I love you actually. So if, if, if for anyone listening, make sure you go and check out Taylor's Instagram, I will be popping that below. Cause she talks about this so beautifully, but let's talk about diet culture and how it impacts, I guess, our ability to ask ourselves why. Yeah. Well, I think whenever it comes to diet culture, we first have to sort of unravel where this started. And I think for a lot of us, it started in childhood, right? Mm -hmm. Like your, your body is your worth. And we were raised to believe that, right? Mm -hmm. It was all over from magazines to, you know, to TV, to the hundred calorie packs and special K. I mean, how many of our listeners have probably been on a slim fast diet? (laughs) So, yeah. And how much of that advertising had a mail on it, mm-hmm. just to be transparent. Not a lot of it, right? Yeah. Most of it, majority of that low calorie restrictive diet is targeted towards women. And mm-hmm. so I think, especially for people in perimenopause, this was very, very true, right? They, they, they grew up in a yeah. culture that very much normalized restrictive diets. Absolutely. And I see this a lot with clients as well is they come to me and like we mentioned, they feel like they're doing all the right things, 
but they are still doing things like having special K for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I totally remember doing that. Like I remember, and I remember those hundred calorie packs of like Oreo cookies. Yes. Things like that. <laughs> you can't have the real Oreo, just the uh, little wafer that tastes like the Oreo. Yes. <laughs> and only a handful. Yes. Yeah. And you're starving an hour later. <laughs> yes. But I, that's, that's exactly it. Like we have to think like, where did it start? And then once you can at least acknowledge where that body image issue or where that diet culture started for you, then you can sort of start to like reframe it in your brain. But mm-hmm. I think just first like bringing it to the forefront and saying, I have a diet culture issue. I yeah. see my body as my worth and recognizing that you have an issue puts you in a position, a really, really strong position to then change and rewire the way mm. that you think about your body and how you can move forward in nourishing your body in this, in such a way that allows you to absolutely thrive yeah. instead of feel terrible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I think it's, and it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's easier said than done and easier said than done to like not add shame to that. But I I hope everyone listening like knows, and and I won't speak for you, but for me, it's like, I have had to do that. It's a practice. It's like a continuous practice. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is this thought even coming from here? And, but it does get easier when you start to understand what, listening to your body and fueling your body actually looks like and that get it listening to that feedback inside instead of instead of the outside marketing. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes from education, like from working with a coach or a nutritionist, someone who can actually teach you the why behind why you need certain, you know, macro micronutrients. Yeah. Then you start being a little bit more open to diversifying your diet a little bit more and stop being so restrictive. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's that other piece where, like you said in the beginning, it's really hard. One, Mm -hmm. it's really hard just to recognize that, you know, Mm -hmm. you're being restrictive Mm -hmm. or to even recognize that it's an issue that you need to fix. Mm -hmm. But two, sometimes it's hard because a lot of people don't understand the why. Why do we need a diverse diet? You know? Yes. So And, 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 you know, let's talk about that. Why? Well, actually, first, let's talk a little bit about you know, if we're stuck in a bit of the diet culture, which we know is a real restricting, you know, focal point, Mm -hmm. what is the impact on our hormones and our gut with, with calorie restriction? Yeah. So calorie restriction is going to lead to imbalanced hormones. It's going to lead to dysbiosis, the imbalance of that bacteria in your gut. Mm-hmm. And when you have that dysbiosis, then you have breakdown of the gut lining, and then you have a whole onslaught of issues mm-hmm. like fatigue or joint pain, acne, psoriasis, like in my mm-hmm. case. And so all of these things really have downstream effects that, you know, in the initial phase, you're just looking to try and look better or feel feel better, right? We might mm-hmm. have good intentions to start with, mm-hmm. but that downstream consequence of the restriction does end up being that. Yeah. undernourished, underfed mm-hmm. and sick. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And it creeps up on you, I think, doesn't it? Right. It's like, and, it does. And, it, and it's hard when you are feeling like you're like, but I am doing the things I am. I thought I was making those right decisions, which brings us yeah. back to that diet culture. So, so we know we need to eat enough, we eat enough of the right things, but let's talk about that. Um, Sorry, my dog has decided to come and join us for this conversation. <laughs> <Hello. laughs> Get right in there, buddy. Um, let's talk about um, then that diversity. So we know, obviously, okay, we 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 need to take a look first at at our views around diet culture. What is you know asking ourselves why? We know we need to make sure we are eating enough. Like that's very very important. I think that's kind of a stepping process. So as we start to do that, what role does yeah, diversity in our food play in the health, health and healing and thriving of our gut. Yeah. So when we think about the gut, there's trillions of different, you know, bacteria, but Mm -hmm. each of them performs a specific function. Some of them synthesize vitamins. Some of them maintain the gut lining. Some Mm -hmm. of them produce short chain fatty acids. They Mm -hmm. all do different things, but they're Mm -hmm. all essential in this balance. Right. And so they require things like fat and carbohydrates and protein in order to do what they know how to do best, right? And so just to kind of give an example, if you're not eating a diet that is high enough in protein or fat, you're not, one, you're not going to have the building blocks for hormones, Mm -hmm. but you're also not going to have the necessary nutrients to maintain the the gut barrier function, right? right? And so 
that's just one huge example. Like we go back to special K and all of these things. (laughs) They're low fat, right? That was the fad in the nineties. It was all about the low fat or the low carb, like South Mm -hmm. beach, right? We can go to that one too. And the fact of the matter is that our gut needs fat, protein, carbohydrates, fiber. It needs all of these things to thrive so that this way your body's working as it should be, as it was made to. Mm -hmm. And this way you actually feel so much better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Overall, it's like, as you say, you're having the right building blocks, and not, not only to make what we need, but also to do our job. It's almost like when you think when you were painting that picture of um, the role of all the different um, guys and guys, we'll call them all the different workers yeah, and all, all those little guys, <laughs> all those little guys, you know, it's almost like the difference between, you know, try telling them all to build a massive you know, castle, but giving them like spades instead of shovels. You know, it's like, let's make sure we're giving people the right tools here, giving guys the right tools to do what they need so that they can do it the best of their ability. Yeah, exactly. Mm Because they can't do it without it. Yeah. They just simply can't. No, it's just not a doable thing. So, So we know, we understand that obviously, you know, gut issues, I assume, come up, we see even more and more in perimenopause because our our hormones are transitioning and they're sensitive. Um, And that the gut is, you know, probably a big root of that issue or certainly healing the gut can really make a big difference in the supporting of our hormones. But so I think we can all understand why it matters to focus then on our gut. But where do we begin to start? Start then. If you're, if if I was coming to you, or if someone's listening and they're like, okay, I know that I don't feel great. I'm having some of these symptoms that we were talking about earlier, whether it's brain fog or fatigue or or digestive issues, you know, regular regular bowel movements, things like that. What, where do they begin once they start asking themselves why? The first place I would begin is by trying to have a more diverse diet. Let's Mm -hmm. add in more fruits. Let's add in more vegetables. Mm -hmm. Let's add in even starchy vegetables. Oh my Mm -hmm. gosh, carbohydrates. We need them (laughs) because they fuel that bacteria. Yeah. Um, But that would be like the main thing that I would focus on with someone who is struggling with their hormones Mm -hmm. is trying to make sure that we are getting enough diversity in plant Mm -hmm. foods, but because a lot of the fiber comes Mm -hmm. from those plant foods, right? Mm -hmm. But also um, making sure that we're getting enough fat and protein in the diet, you know? And so what I always tell my clients to aim for is about 30 grams of protein with each yeah. meal. And depending on how they do, sometimes we even increase it to 40. It really depends on yeah. their level of activity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then fat wise, it's so important to focus on omega-3 fatty acids. So you mm-hmm. can get those from like salmon or walnuts, chia seeds. And I think that that's sometimes hard to implement the good fats into the diet if you've mm-hmm. had this mindset that fat is bad, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, you can do these things to start diversifying your diet, to start building up the populations of the good bacteria that can perform the necessary functions for you. But again, going back to that mindset mindset piece, it's super important to address that mindset. So if you find that, you know, you're not really sure why you restrict, um, I would I would ask you a question, you know, are you restricting for body image? Do you have food fear because you have shown sensitivities to different types of food, mm. you know, um, or is this, like I said, is this simply just, I, I want to look better or is it just misplaced knowledge? You know, mm-hmm. do you think you're doing a good job and you're not? So I think, you know, starting with that mindset piece and making a clear intention that you're going to choose to nourish your body so you can thrive. Mm-hmm. I think that that's a good inf- um, affirmation too. Like whenever you're sitting down to eat, say, I choose to nourish my body today because I deserve to feel good Mm -hmm. or I deserve to thrive. And just sort of starting to affirm with yourself that food is not the enemy. Mm -hmm. And if it is something like food fear from symptoms related to the food, then we need to work on the gut. It's Mm -hmm. not the food that's the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's the imbalance and the battle that's happening inside your microbiome that's causing those food sensitivities. Mm -hmm. So I think just really starting to see food as a tool that helps you thrive because Mm -hmm. that is what it is instead of seeing it as the enemy. Mm -hmm. Right. So I love that. Seafood is a tool to thrive. Um, 
And also, yeah, because it really is so informative, right? When we pay attention and we try something and it, it you know, it gives us clean energy for several hours after, then like it's yes. a win. If it doesn't, not a win. <laughs> it is so beautiful too, to help someone find a breakfast that is well balanced with fat mm-hmm. and protein and fiber and yeah. have them eat it and structure it in a way that balances their blood sugar yeah. and then just watch them like fly with energy for four hours. And they're like, wow. I feel amazing. Yeah. 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 Happened to someone for the first time. They're like, breakfast is going great. I look forward to breakfast every morning now. And you think about most women are skipping breakfast. They're Mm -hmm. drinking coffee on an empty stomach. Yeah. So to go from that to feeling nourished and energized in the morning, it's a huge shift for a lot of people. Oh yeah. And to not have, you know, and so let's just, let's just normalize that for a brief like minute here. Like your food should help you feel like full and satisfied and energized yes. until your next meal, four to five hours later. Like it just yes. should. And if it's not, you know, there's nothing wrong with you, but there are opportunities, like choose, let's let's start to work on it and choose differently. Yeah. Yeah. Make the intentional decision mm-hmm. to start finding better ways to nourish yourself. Yeah. When you said, so when we were talking about, you know, if you're, you're starting to do these things and you're still having issues in, in, so we can often assume at that point, there is a dysbiosis. In your opinion, is that the time where we definitely want to reach out and get a coach? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. If you find that a lot of your food fear is more related to symptoms that you're experiencing, because you might be listening and say, Taylor, I know avocado is a great fat and I really want to eat it, but I can't because I get a horrible stomach ache. You know, that, That says to me that there's an imbalance. We Mm -hmm. have a gut that is not functioning properly Mm -hmm. and you need testing and likely need a protocol to help Mm -hmm. heal the gut so that this Mm -hmm. way you can then tolerate the foods that your body needs. Yeah. Yeah. What is, what is the testing that you would rec that you would do for a client in that situation? Like GI pathogen? I usually do GI mapping. Mapping, through yeah. DHA laboratories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Great. So it's okay. such good information. I love yeah. it so much. It sounds like you do GI mapping as well. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's, but as we say, I mean, I think we, it's, I think part of diet culture or part of culture for women teaches us like, oh, you know, this is just you, you're just getting older. But when we scratch that surface of like, okay, well, why are my hormones imbalanced? Often it comes down to our gut health and it's like, why am I unable to be, you know, consistent in making these decisions and look at my food as like, as a guide or something that should help me thrive. Then we can start to really step right back. Can't we into that process of healing, but it does require time and energy and focus. Yeah. Yeah. And I think something cool to touch on too is, you know, there's certain bacteria in the gut that help stimulate the production of serotonin. And so a lot of times going through that perimenopausal phase, we're like thinking, oh my gosh, we're so, we're so anxious. We're Mm -hmm. struggling with depression. There's hormones changing all over the place. We're not sleeping well. And it's like, let's take a step back and let's look at those fundamentals. Do we even have bacteria present that are stimulating the serotonin? Serotonin breaks down into melatonin. So if we don't have that specific bacteria at good levels, we're also not going to be sleeping well. So Ah. we're going to experience things like mood changes and trouble sleeping. So it almost begs the question, how much of it is perimenopausal hormone shifts like estrogen Mm -hmm. and progesterone? And how much is it actually the gut? So I I, think if you can optimize the gut, then you can start to see relief in a lot of these symptoms in a lot of people. Absolutely. I love that you said that because I think, you know, I always say perimenopause doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Like, I think it's just a big fat fat highlighter that kind of comes in and is like, Hey, time to pay attention. Now you've ignored me for the last two decades while you've done your thing. And now it's time to pay attention. And, and you're right in that process of focusing on, on that gut health, it will help your entire body start to thrive um, and support all of that. And at the very least, it will allow you to properly absorb things like should you need to take hormone replacement therapy or should you need to take different supplements, at least you're prepared to actually use them instead of it being another thing that you buy and doesn't work. Yeah, I love it because mm-hmm. if, you know, if, you know, stomach acid, let's touch on that again. If we have an overgrowth mm-hmm. of something like H. pylori, mm-hmm. we have suppressed stomach acid we're not going to absorb any of the supplements we're taking anyways. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's, that's a really good one. H. pylori is a good one to talk about for sure. Um, there's so many pieces. So, you know, maybe just, just let's just round this out. I'd love to hear from you because sometimes we're like, I think as women, 
we dismiss our, you know, our feelings. Sometimes we're dismissed and sometimes yeah. we dismiss our own things. So what are, what would you say are some of the most common and even some uncommon symptoms of, you know, challenges in our gut that we should definitely be paying attention to? So I think that the most common symptoms would be like your constipation, diarrhea, bloating, discomfort after eating certain foods. Those are all like your pretty common, typical symptoms you think of whenever you think about gut dysfunction. Yeah. But I think some of the more uncommon ones would be things like skin rashes, chronic acne. Like if you're 40 and you got acne, like let's figure this out. There is a way, you know, Yeah. or (laughs) if you have um, chronic fatigue or trouble sleeping, you know, Mm. those are all related to the gut brain fog, anxiety or depression. You feel like, yeah, life's life's pretty good, but I'm really anxious. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it an issue in the gut? Is Mm -hmm. it blood sugar dysregulation? And it goes back to asking that why. Yeah. But those are some of those more uncommon symptoms that I see very frequently. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what will bring people in for a gut analysis is something like bloating or holding on to excess weight. But then you uncover all these other symptoms that they're struggling with. And you're like, baby, that's, that's the gut too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, Even allergies, right? It's yeah. like, if you think, allergies, yeah. 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 why I suddenly have allergies? I never used to have allergies and now I have allergies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Asthma or just yeah. seasonal allergies you never used to have. And then again, like those food sensitivities, like if you're yeah. developing a lot of new food sensitivities later in life, you Mm -hmm. most certainly have an imbalance in the microbiome that needs to be checked. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you said that. I think that's so huge. And, you know, sometimes I talk to, you know, whether my friends in the industry or other women women clients, and it can feel like your health is a full-time job in the process back. However, I find when you do decide to focus on it, when you go, you know, through the process of working with someone like you and healing that that piece, life gets a heck of a lot easier, doesn't it? When you don't have these things that you didn't even realize were tied to how unwell you were feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause once you start achieving that balance, then you have better blood sugar. Mm-hmm. You don't hold on to weight as much. You don't have as much inflammation. You start sleeping better. You're getting rid of toxins a lot easier because you're mm-hmm. having fully formed bowel movements every single day. Mm-hmm. You know, all of these things are so important. Yeah. And I think that it's really easy, like you said, to put it to the wayside because we're so busy. We're so busy with life and trying to meet everyone's expectations that sometimes it does take that perimenopausal phase to kind of push us to look at what's going on with our bodies and start mm-hmm. taking action. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I try to look at it and recommend, you know, so for everyone listening, if you're starting, like, look at this as our gift, like this is, it gets to happen in our forties because we still have so much life to live. Yes. And so let's make it the best, you know, that we can, if maybe we made some decisions in the first half that weren't ideal, let's not sweat them. Let's just, you know, regroup, pivot and keep going. I love that. I love yeah. that. Your Thank body's you. symptoms are yeah. the way that your body speaks to you. Yes. Yeah. So listening to those whispers of your body. So if you are here, if you're listening, if you're, you know, experiencing any of those symptoms that Taylor talked about, you know, I think, you know, we know you'll know, you'll know in your gut, <laughs> pun intended, <laughs> that, I love that it. it's time. Yeah, it's time. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Taylor. This has been incredible. I appreciate everything you've covered. Like we've talked about everything from diversity of like plant foods, of how to recognize if you're struggling of diet culture, um, I, I so appreciate it. How do how do our listeners find out more from you if they want to dig deeper into into healing of their gut or working with you or just learning more from you? Where is the best place to do that? Yeah. So if you're just looking to learn more and kind of understand the basics of gut health, um, you can find me on Instagram, mod underscore health co. And I also have a free gut guide that um, your listeners are welcome to download if they're just looking for kind of just like some basic guidance on where mm-hmm. the heck do I even start with this? Yeah. It has six strategies in there that you can start with to start improving your gut health. Mm-hmm. And um, if anyone's interested in working with me, you can always um, find the application on my website. Amazing. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, sisters, go with your gut today. Be more in your life and not just less on a scale. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for joining me on the Period Whisperer podcast. I want to encourage you to reach out to me directly and message me if there are topics or things you're struggling with so we can address those right where you are at. And of course, if you loved this episode, if you learned something, make sure to share it with your friends and please rate and review it wherever you get your podcasts.